Hello there, John Meyer here. A little different this week. I'm actually in Round Top, Texas right now. We were in Austin, Texas uh, with my family, visiting other family. So yeah, the scenery is a little different behind me. In our world of creative work, there's quite a bit of talk about chasing your dreams. And I admit that I don't really know what that means. The type of oversimplified bumper sticker talk uh, doesn't quite process with me. Of course we need to dream big. I've had big dreams of my own. I wanted to be a top level engineer. I wanted to produce big hits. I wanted to write hit songs. I can't give you any real meaningful advice on chasing your dreams. You can end up in a really bad place and I don't want you to blame me for it. So instead of thinking about chasing my dreams, I try to think about it a little different. You know, am I completely and fully engaged in the work that I'm doing? Over the years, I've worked on projects and jobs that have paid very little, and I have been locked in every second. And on the flip side, I have worked on jobs that have paid a lot of money, and I've been absolutely miserable. I've said in this channel many times that I'll do whatever it takes to take care of my family, and if the music and film and YouTube thing doesn't work out, then I'll ditch it and do something else. But anytime I can take on a job or take on a project or start something that I'm inspired in, that really locks me in, that I can sit and work on for hours and hours at a time, even if that means a little bit less money, I'm gonna do that thing. So I'm gonna tell you about some of the things that I've done where I followed my intrigue and did some things that had no clear route to a payoff in any way. But before I do that, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe to my channel because I've been watching a bunch of YouTubers who talk about how important it is to ask you to subscribe and how effective it is. If you enjoy what I'm doing and you wanna hear more, hit subscribe. If you don't, then don't hit subscribe because I think that would hurt me more than it would help. A decade or so ago, I was recording bands in Dallas area and doing some engineering projects. And I just got the whim to make a singer-songwriter project and I was, I'd always had difficulties with words, and so I spent forever and forever and forever trying to write songs that matter to my heart or whatever, and I thought about halfway through it, what am I doing? And I did some shows, and of course I thought maybe I could write a song for somebody and it'd be a big hit. I didn't think that I would ever be the one to do it, but that album led to so many opportunities for me to do so many things that I never could have imagined. And one of the most important things it did was give me an opportunity to eventually write for production music libraries. When I started writing production music, I got the chance to write a couple libraries for a company, but I realized that I could sit down and write these songs and not get up for hours, and I realized how much I loved it. So I decided to dive in and I made eight full albums. And for those of you that ask, like, how do I get into the production music? business. This is just kind of an aside. I think that by creating albums of material or significant amounts of songs with one theme is a good way to start because I believe that shows people that you're serious. If I saw somebody do that, I would think they were serious. And I believe the people that I worked with thought I was pretty serious or crazy to write all those songs without a home. But I was so engaged and so locked into it that the time flew by and I thought, well, nothing has really got me like this. So I think I can do it and I am going to prove to myself that I can as much as I'm gonna to prove to everybody else. I'm jumping from place to place so fast, I'm sweating. My family's already gone to dinner. I've gotta speed it up. But that production music thing was going well and then I thought, I'm gonna make an album of songs that are just for me. And then I got into this film thing and it just started snowballing and snowballing and snowballing. And the whole time I thought, what am I doing spending all this time? What am I doing spending all this energy on writing these songs and making these films? Well. It has absolutely opened doors for me. One, I don't think without Paper Trail and doing those films that I would be at a spot where I could have started the YouTube thing and the sampling thing went along with that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to watch some of my other videos. But now I'm even getting calls from people to do paid film projects. And that was never a plan of mine and I still don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Absolutely, if I didn't scratch that itch, there's no way that I'm having these opportunities to even turn down if I want to. Now, just to be clear, when I did all these things, they were on my extra time. You know, they were, I did my duties, my job, the things that were in front of me, but I always tried to find as much time to do those extra things. It's not like I just said, I'm gonna abandon everything. But when you start following your gut, when you start doing the things that you're engaged in, there's a, there's a lot of trust involved that it's going to lead somewhere good. I mean, I've had a lot of experience kind of betting on myself and over the years, it's turned into something. So I can go into something somewhat blind and trust that I'm gonna come out of it somewhere. It's not gonna be a waste, even if it's a failure. I got tired of moving around, so I basically just changed the angle of the shot. 
When you're listening to me, you might be thinking, oh, you're spreading yourself a little too thin. You're going a little too wide. And I agree, that's probably true. But nobody knows where the music business is going. Anyone who says they do is crazy. I just watched videos on NFTs and I'm thinking about making an NFT. You may not even know what an NFT is and I certainly don't know, except what I do know I think is ridiculous. But we don't know where it's going. And so maybe, just maybe, being a composer, a filmmaker, YouTuber, and whatever. I was gonna try woodworking, but I'm so afraid I was gonna cut my finger off and so I abandoned that. I'm back at the minivan because my mom forgot the keys that were actually in the van, so that's good that I found them. What am I trying to say? Perhaps this is a clickbaity title. Yes, you need to have dreams, but don't think about what you could be if you got to that point where those dreams came true. Find that thing that you love to do and don't be afraid to change if it's not working out because we change and the things that we're interested in change. So plan your career, be diligent, but this is just a reminder that if you're not fulfilled in your work and you're not engaged in it, not that you're gonna have bad days, but it doesn't really get you going to watch tutorial videos and spend the extra hours, then, you know, maybe rethink what you're doing. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you didn't get too dizzy with me jumping all around, uh, round top. If you like this video, please subscribe like I asked you to do earlier, and I'll talk to you soon.